All right, here goes nothing. Crash. Climbing Shiver Mountain and reaching Crystal Palace is a memorable section of Paper Mario, and it might just be the glitchiest part of the game. Granted, most of them aren't the type of things a casual player would come across. Take a look at this green switch under a block of ice. All you have to do is break it, and Tornado Jump once again to activate the button. This raises the path and puzzle solved, if you really even consider it one. Afterwards, the switch still has a use in moving the terrain up or down, though that's never required again. But I'm glad it's possible because there are some interesting glitches when combined with a little something known as save block storage. Back up a bit to Shiver City, where we can perform the sushi glitch. Using our partner from this exact location on the dock will offset our position, enough to clip through collision. Now that we're navigating through solid ground, this exploit can be carried to the icy switch room. Sushi Glitch is also capable of manipulating Mario's movement potential when conjoined with battles. What I mean by that is we can effectively trick the game into permitting actions during segments when they are generally disabled, such as while saving our progress. In most cases, including this one, we need to encounter an enemy twice. The only catch is during the second fight, we swap away from Sushi to cancel lasting glitchy effects associated with swimming. I know I've explained this before in other videos, but it is important to recognize the specificity involved with movement exploits. Plus, it's easy to miss a step that could completely change the outcome. Now, we need to perform a spin jump into the save block, which is a little more difficult than it appears. There's only a two-frame window, with a degree of coordinate precision. This lets us move around with the text active, and we can start storing the switch presses. However, this would include dialogue micromanagement since our inputs affect both gameplay and text scrolling right now. To simplify the process, we translate the save block storage into our partner menu and spin jump while executing a partner swap. This can then be cancelled with C down and now we can have some fun. Notice the switch presses are stored at this point. At first glance this may look uneventful, but hitting it again actually stacks and multiplies the speed in which the ice block moves later. Each time, the ice segment will go down by another 180 units, while the green button itself behaves normally. With this, you can create your very own Out of Bounds Hangout. The hitboxes remain unchanged, so it's possible to walk off the horizontal ledges. As with typical Out of Bounds behavior, the game places Mario on collision relative to his upward ascent. In the event there are no hitboxes above us, our position is reset to the most recent valid location. We've only talked about when the ice path is already raised, but when lowered, the storage reacts differently. Instead of ascending, it follows an unexpected course of action. It's tough to follow, but hacking the camera makes things easier to see. Because the collision vanishes from beneath Mario, this follows unprecedented out-of-bounds behavior. On Virtual Console ports of the game, Mario's position spazzes out, but on the original Nintendo 64 hardware, this crashes the game with a floating point exception. The same effect can be achieved by stacking the switch at least 12 times when descending. This sends the ice block lower than Mario's rebounding Y coordinate, which means out of bounds becomes even more broken. The game tries to reset our position every frame, so Mario can essentially stand in midair. With a proper angle, you can work around this and skyrocket to the surface. Some portion of that upwards momentum can be controlled by the player, and you can reach the game world again. Jumping doesn't work properly, along with some partners. Paracarry's airlift detaches him from Mario, and softlocks. Lackalester does the same thing and looks plain weird. If we spin jump off the surface, Mario gets stuck in place. So that was all at 12 switch hits, but just how low can we go? Once we've hit the switch 56 times, the height coordinates reach negative 10,080. Below 10,000 units, the camera stops following us. Unfortunately, that's all there is to it. The lowest possible value is negative 21,600 units after storing the switch 120 times. But something has to be tracking how many times we've pressed the switch if we're still seeing differences up to that point. Turns out there's a section of the game's memory dedicated to the script execution order. With a basic partner swap storage in this room, only one of these addresses are currently occupied. 
Each time you store an event, it sets a pointer value to the next available section of highlighted memory and increments the counter. That means we can fill the entire allocated section with this switch. It will take 120 hits to fill the list, and trying to store anything else from there crashes the game. This can include yet another switch press, touching a loading zone, or even hammering. On the Nintendo 64, it actually fails to load the crash handler, but the game is indeed frozen. I'd like to give a shout out to Bone Crusher, JD Aster, and Piston Miner for their help in testing and understanding certain aspects of this glitch. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and check out the description for various credits and social media links. As always, thank you for watching.